inside America's boardrooms. The informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this episode of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. We're going to be talking about something that is near and dear to this show, and certainly to me, and that's the topic of board leadership. And we have a great guest here who certainly embodies leadership, and it's my pleasure to welcome Bill Murdy, who's a board member with Vectris and also the lead director of LSB Industries. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. So let me give a little background because I think it's important to lead into what we're talking about. Um, first of all, you attended West Point, and we got to say that we've had four or five West Point grads on, and all of them have assumed leadership positions, so that's no real surprise. Uh, so you had a distinguished military career after West Point. You've been a CEO in various companies for the last 35, or over a period of 35 years. Um, and again, as I mentioned, you're a lead director on one. Uh, you're also the principal owner and chairman of Thayer Hotel. And you also, uh, most importantly, are the principal owner and uh, chairman of the Thayer uh, Leader Development Group. Right. Okay. So, um, who well, better... I'm, I'm a principal owner. Okay. I, I, Okay, well, but who better to ask a little bit about leadership? So just offer first your philosophy on board leadership a little bit. Well, uh, you know, first of all, let me back up a little bit. That boards uh, are strange animals in many respects. Uh, you know, leadership uh, in, of, and on a board are quite a bit different than uh, leadership generally, except for some basic principles, which I could talk about later if you want. But uh, it, in the bird world, uh, for instance, you know, the, uh, board members are like eagles. You know, it's a gathering of eagles, and, and eagles don't necessarily flock. They don't, they don't come together naturally. They, they work on their own. And that, I think, is one of the, the principles I, I look for, is that the independence of each director uh, needs to be uh, preeminent and, and spoken, and, and and each director needs to feel, on a continuing basis, that he or she is a a leader. Uh, and I look for things like open communications, the willingness to challenge other board members, challenge uh, the CEO, uh, the uh, executive chairman or non-executive chairman, or whomever is uh, the quote quote nominated board leader. Uh, you know, you, you, you got to look for, you know, there's some basic things that, uh, that you have to build leadership on. Honesty, integrity, competence. And I look for those things as well. Uh, and I, I'm privileged to say that, uh, you know, the six or seven public boards that I've been on, the 10 or 15 private boards uh, and, and not-for-profit boards, I've, I've never had a problem in the area of, of integrity and honesty, uh, competence uh, from time to time, but uh, never those two. And so I, those are some of the basic things that, that I think are important to, to board leadership. So some of the challenges when people talk about board leadership, um, I, I agree with you. You have all these eagles, but at some point in time, there are, and we've seen it, we've seen boards that has very talented people but it almost came down to almost like herding cats. You had, you had everybody, all these people were independently successful, okay? And somebody has to try and make sure that everybody's moving in the same direction and you get accomplished what needs to be accomplished on the board. And like you said, occasionally there are people that are not competent, okay, or that aren't contributing to the board like should. And that's where board leadership steps in. Somebody's needs to be able to uh, sit with somebody out of a board evaluation or whatever and say either here's what you need to improve on or whatever. And that's tough when you've got all eagles, okay? So 
describe your experiences with that where, where you've been on both sides, where you've been the person that might have had to say something to a board, you know, a board member, or where, whether some, at some point in time a board member had to say something to you. I, I've, I've been in that position. Uh, and, you know, let's set aside the, uh, the instance where the chairman of the board is, is also the CEO. And that's right. a, a model that's changing. But today, either the uh, executive chairman, non-executive chairman, or the lead director right. fill in what you're talking here. And, and it is absolutely necessary for that person to lead and got to lead from the front. Uh, uh, but it's got to lead in a fashion where there is uh, inclusiveness. I mean, at, at the end of the day, there has to be a collaborative effort. And uh, on the spectrum of collaborative to combative, uh, the boards that I've been on that over time are the most effective are the ones that get to a level of collaboration without falling into the groupthink uh, tank. Uh, and that leader is absolutely responsible for that. And, you know, th this is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a sui generis problem. It, each board is different. Each board dynamic is different. There are cultures. Uh, there are cultures that been, can be created. I, I've been lucky enough to, been, to have been on some forming boards, boards that have been formed after a bankruptcy, boards that have been formed after a spin out, boards that have been formed as a, a new company went public, where we got to establish some of those principles early and the leader has to do that as well. The leader has to uh, you know, start a, a discussion on culture uh, early on in a, in a new board. Uh, and, and you have to establish some kind of common understanding of what the culture uh, is going to be or has to be to get things done. So I, I think that's responsive yeah. to, it's not, it's not though, you know, top down uh, World War II military kind of smoke them if you got them leadership. It's, uh, and, and that, by the way, that model has, uh, you know, the, the, the for instance, the military today is not led that way. The military is a very, not, I don't think collaborative is the right word, but it's uh, where the leader provides uh, guidance, resources, uh, checks, but there's a lot of dependence on the other people as leaders individually, and the other uh, subordinate commanders, for instance. Yeah. So. Well, that makes perfect sense, and uh, and we've always said that there's it's rare that there is one size that fits all, and there's no question that every board's different. Uh, but that's one of the challenges that a director has too, is to evaluate what makes each board tick and what do you have in the way of resources, et cetera, et cetera. So if I were to press you. Um, as a longtime leader, if I was to press you on the, on the three keys to making sure that your board has some form of leadership, what would be the three things that would come to your mind, you know, as, as you observe a board? What are, what are the things that would give you comfort to know that your board has board leadership? Well, I, I, I think... Um making sure that each board member has a passion for what the entity is about, making sure you've got a, he or she has a commitment to do that and has the competence to carry that out uh, for sure. Um, you know, things like encouraging independence on a continuing basis, uh, not uh, cutting off someone simply because that someone is disagreeing with what appears to be some kind of consensus. Uh, I, I think, uh, I, I look, I think you can create a lot of leadership in a board by uh, allowing the three principal committees, uh, audit, comp, and governance, to have real power, if you will, uh, where those people can be part uh, of an active leadership uh, team, if you will. And I guess the last is that just making sure that directors are prepared. I think people who are prepared uh, are a little more confident uh, in the boardroom and are willing to 
say something. If they come in not knowing the latest and haven't uh, really studied the current situation, they're going to be unwilling to embarrass themselves by saying anything. Uh, and so if they can get prepared, they're going to feel more confident and uh, will be able to act a as, uh, as a useful board yeah. member. Bill Murdy, uh, that is great advice from someone who has certainly been there and done that, and we appreciate that. We want to thank you for taking the time to join us on the show today. Yeah. And uh, that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take a look at another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. We'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society for Corporate Governance.